Hi everyone, welcome to Daisy Stalls. Now this far in my seasonal fantasy horse series, I've made one fall and one winter inspired horse. And naturally now since spring has arrived, the trees are flowering and everything outside is a lot more green, it's finally time to make the spring inspired horse. My first idea was to turn the spring horse into a playful and lively spring foal instead. And since it's supposed to be a fantasy horse, I thought adding some wings could be a cute addition. Then I was just left with the task of finding a country or a culture to take inspiration from as well, since that's kind of the point of the series. After doing some research, I found out that in Persian culture, there is a mythical creature called a peri, which is effectively a fair-skinned female fairy who is beautiful and also a bit mischievous. I thought that would be a great idea for my foal, so I took that, along with the popular Persian spring flower, the hyacinth, into consideration, and I came up with a design. Now, deciding on the base model was a piece of cake, as I've used this one before and I absolutely adore it. This is the Southland Replicas Brumby Foal, and it's honestly one of the best, if not the best, foal I've seen in this scale. While unboxing it, I managed to drop it and it broke the tail and a bit of the ear, but luckily that won't matter for this project. As you saw from the broken tail and ear, this plastic is quite snappy, so I'm going to boil up some water and pour it into a bowl. And I'm going to give the foal a good bath in that hot water to soften the plastic. After about one minute in the water, the legs are nice and bendy and ready to be chopped off one by one. I do this because the pose I'm aiming for is vastly different than the current one, so cutting off the legs at each of the joints will make it possible to reposition it. I was using a craft knife for a while, but it was taking ages and it was kind of unsafe, so I decided to just use some good old scissors and that was so much easier. After cutting off the legs, I have a good look at the areas around the stifle, elbow, and shoulder, and I cut away any of the areas that wouldn't match with the movement of the new pose. I go ahead and chop off the ears as well, as she'll be receiving something quite different. And as if that wasn't enough, I'm going to saw off the neck as well, as I want it to be in a different position. I usually get my dad to do this, as I'm not very strong, but he wasn't home this time, so I had to do it myself. I did struggle quite a bit, and I realized I could have just used my Dremel tool, but honestly, that thing kind of scares me. It's just a bit too powerful. <laughs> Eventually, I was able to saw it off, and I end up with this legless, earless, necklace thing. <laughs> These pieces need to be reconnected, so I'm getting out my power drill and drilling a hole into the cut part of all of the pieces. After all that's done, I got out some thick florist wire, which I uh, permanently borrowed from my mother. And I'm going to start by sticking that into the holes by the neck and reconnect the head. And I'll do the same for all the legs. Now, after roughly reuniting the body, I try to bend it roughly into the pose that I want, and at the moment I thought it looked alright, but after a few hours of readjusting, I got something like this, which I think is better. Even with several hours of just looking at it and adjusting, I thought it couldn't get any better, but I ended up adjusting a little bit here and there off camera, so it did end up looking a little bit different. Anyways, once I was completely sure of the pose, I went ahead and sealed it in by gluing it with super glue. Once 
Once that is completely dry, I'm going to start filling in the gaps and sculpting new details with two-part epoxy sculpt. Now for some reason, this time I had a really hard time just starting with the sculpting. It was really daunting to me. I guess it's been a while since I've done a drastic custom. After around a day and a half of stalling, I knew I had to start at some point, so I just mustered up whatever courage I could find and just started. I guess there's a reason they call me Daisy Stalls. Oh dear, that's not good. Anyways, I take out equal parts of tab A and tab B of the epoxy, then I mix it thoroughly together and start sculpting. I usually do two rounds of epoxy, the first round just to block out the shape and the second one to refine the details, but since this model is quite small, I actually managed to sculpt most of it in one pass. I say I only do one pass, but that's just for one area, which I leave to harden in the sun to prevent myself from smooshing that work while working on another area. When sculpting, I'm very meticulous about getting very specific reference photos, as I want to know how the muscles act in that specific pose and how I should sculpt them. Though I was a bit scared of starting with the sculpting, once I got into the rhythm of it, I actually really enjoyed it, and I'm also really happy with how detailed I got the sculpting of the muscles, etc. I finished the sculpting of the legs after a few days, and I must say I'm very very happy with the result actually. However, at some point during the sculpting, I realized this foal's nostrils are a bit strange looking, they're a bit flat and high up, so I thought I would make them a bit more flared to go with the dynamic pose. I wait until the nostrils are cured, then I start sculpting the neck as well. I always start sculpting with this metal tool to get the general shape and silhouette right. Then I refine and sculpt more details with this silicon tool. And then I finish off by smoothing everything down with a wet paintbrush. I'm going to let this cure overnight. Then the next day I'm getting out the sandpaper and smoothing out any visible bumps or lumps. Then when I think I'm done, I'm going to give the foal a layer of primer. First of all, make sure you wear a proper filtration mask as these fumes are no good for you to breathe in. Then I give the foal a couple of sprays and this will make it a solid color which is very helpful for picking out imperfections. And also if you layer the primer, it will have a slight filling effect which just means it kind of fills in or smooths out any tiny nooks or cracks. I carefully inspect the foal under a good light and I start sculpting and sanding on the places that need a bit more work. After going back and forth with that and priming, I'm pretty happy with the result I got, so next let's give this foal some ears. I mark out where I want them, then I drill holes for the wire, and I probably should have done this before I sculpted everything else as I easily could have cracked the clay but everything went smoothly this time. To sculpt ears, I usually start by covering the wire with a blob of epoxy and really smoothing it onto the horse. Then I take a slightly bigger teardrop shaped piece of epoxy and flatten it out like this. Then I kind of place it around that blob of epoxy and done, you're finished. Just kidding, you have to do a lot more work than that. From here you really want to just look at reference pictures and refine the ear shape. And this time for me, it means making these little cute curly ears. I did this because I had the idea to make the ears look like hyacinth petals. I think it's an adorable look anyway, so I'm happy with my choice. Now I'm actually done with sculpting and usually I would move on to paints, but I have a bit of a problem when it comes to making this full stand. To fix that problem, I thought I would use this tree stump, which was actually a part of last year's Christmas tree, and I'd make a stand slash a little diorama out of it. 
and it actually still smells like Christmas. <laughs> Anyways, to make the foil actually stand, I'll be using these smooth metal nails, which are just a little bit smaller in diameter than the hooves. I use a metal saw to make them about the length of the thickness of the tree stump. Then I drill holes that are the diameter of the nails into the hind hooves of the foal. Then once those are in, I'm going to mark around the pegs onto the tree stump where I want the foal to stand. I got a bit carried away doing some tree stump ASMR. I drilled two holes on the marks drawn, both in the diameter of the pegs. Then with a little bit of jiggling, the pegs fit in there snugly, and the foal stands! Yay! Now we can move on to paints, and for that reason, I just drilled a couple holes into a spare plank piece, because I don't want to mess up the actual stand. I start by giving her a base layer of off-white acrylic paint. Because I water out the paint a fair amount, I need to do many layers, and in between those layers, I set the foal under a box to prevent any dust from settling onto the wet paint. Once the base layer is completely opaque, I'm going to prep her for pastels by giving her two layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. Once that has dried, we're ready to give her some color using soft pan pastels. Now from this point out, I didn't really have the clearest of ideas of how I wanted this foal to look, I kind of just had a general sense so I just went with a soft brown color. After a few layers, it turned out like this, and I honestly wasn't over the moon about it, but I thought I could redeem it with acrylic paints. When I started painting, I actually got the idea to take some color inspiration from this foal from Star Stable, as well as these cute deer. I try to incorporate some warm browns, pinks, yellows, and greens to make her look like she's a part of the spring environment and to make her look magical. I also decided to go all in with the deer slash fawn look, so I give her some cute spots on her butt. To give her some more magical sparkle, I thought I'd dust some gold shimmer on her body, and I think this can kind of resemble a light dusting of pollen as well. It's subtle, but I think it's cute. Once all the paint stuff is done, I'm giving her a couple final layers of Mr. Super Clear, then we're moving on to making her accessories. First, I'm using this super thin wrapping paper to cut out some petal shapes like this. I use watercolors to paint them a super light pink. Once dry, I'm going to glue them around her legs like this, and these will be her little hyacinth feathers. I did paint them a little bit to blend them in and to bring out some highlights and shadows. And next, I'll be using UV resin to cover the petals, to make them stiffer and to give them more of a 3D look. I do this to all of her legs, then I set her out in the sun for the resin to cure. The resin gave a great effect to the petals, but now that I look at her, she definitely needs a mane, so let's add that next. To achieve that fluffy, soft baby hair look, I thought I would use acrylic yarn wefts for her mane. I made these following Mosekito's yarn weft tutorial. I just left out the straightening iron part, as I wanted a kind of wavy and fluffy look. I glue a little piece of it onto her neck,
Then I start gluing smaller wefts piece by piece onto her little naked tail. I waited for the glue to completely dry before I gave this super fluffy tail a proper trim. I actually used an eyebrow razor for this and I found the result to be much more natural. Now that her mane is finished, I'm going to be starting on her wings, which in this case will be made out of real leaves. Yes, you heard me right. I went around the house and harvested some leaves from my mother's plants and ended up with some olive and laurel leaves. Next up, I'm putting some water in a pot and dropping the leaves in it. Then I'll be dropping a whole bunch of baking soda into the pot. Then I bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about 2 to 3 hours. After that time has passed, it doesn't smell very nice, but I'm going to bring the leaves onto a plate. Then I'll be using a toothbrush to gently rub off the green pulp off the leaf. Eventually, the leaf should appear a bit more transparent like this and you just want to continue until most of the green stuff is off. Once I cannot scrub that leaf any longer, I carefully drop it into a bowl of bleach and leave it there for about 20 minutes. Then I let them completely dry, and I didn't show this on camera, but eventually I did put the leaves in between two paper towels inside a book so they would stay flat. Once dry, I have these lovely transparent white leaves and you can clearly see the veining which I think is super cool and very appropriate for the wings. I'm going to be using a tiny bit of watercolor to just slightly tint the leaves in a pinkish shade. Now the leaves look very pretty, but they're a bit big for my tiny foal, so I'm going to trim them a bit into this specific shape. I use a tiny bit of green on the stem of the leaf to make them look a little bit more natural. And since these leaves are very fragile, I thought I would reinforce them with some gloss varnish, but I later actually used the UV resin. And here is the result. I'm actually quite pleased with these, and I also made a smaller pair to go with them. I used super glue to glue them onto the foal. And look at that! I'd say that's quite cute. I wanted to make some flower stamens for her. So I'll be using sewing thread, dipping that into wood glue, then into yellow pastels to look like pollen. I made a whole bunch of them, and I attached some into her ears. And some above her hooves, underneath the petals. Now the season of spring, which this foal is supposed to be inspired by, really revolves around fresh new life, and I was thinking about how I could convey through this foal that feeling. Now, when I made the winter horse, Lavina, I ordered these glass microbeads and I didn't use them all, so they actually sparked the idea to create the illusion of dew on this foal. I ended up adding a bunch of microbeads to her and I really like how it looks. Now moving on to making this wooden base into a spring-like diorama. Now first, I want to have a puddle in this diorama, so I reluctantly pulled out the dremel and used the sanding bit to hollow out a little space. Then I painted the surface in a more earthy shade. Now, to give the illusion of grass on my diorama, I actually bought a static grass applicator, and this is the first time I'm handling one, and I made so many mistakes, so I definitely won't be providing any detailed instructions. I think you can find better ones elsewhere. 
But before I start applying the grass, I'd like to make the base look a bit more realistic first. So I'm using this diorama ground kit I bought online and I'm just following the instructions. Then I start dotting wood glue where I want the grass to look like it's growing. Then I very aggressively shake that applicator until I'm happy with the coverage. And it ends up looking like pretty convincing grass. I add some more details like flowers. These pink ones are actually made out of a grated sponge. Now for the puddle I talked about, I'll be using UV resin again. Usually you can just set your resin out in the sun and it will cure naturally, but this time it was overcast so I had to use a lamp. And with that, both the full and the diorama are completely finished. I decided... I decided that the name for my playful spring full should be Perry, as that's both the name of my main inspiration as well as an actual Persian female name. Now, am I happy with the result? Well, the thing is, I'm very very happy with my resculpting of this full. I think it's my best yet, but the overall look, I'm just not sure about it. Now, she's very adorable, I'll say that much. And I really like her little flower hooves, I think that was a good idea. Maybe it's the pastel color palette and the cutesy vibes that aren't really jiving with me. I'm not sure, but I am happy with her in a way. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop beating myself up now and instead thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you're looking forward to the finale of this series, which will be the Summer Horse. I already have plans for the design, so I'm optimistic it will be a good one. But again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!